Good morning, and welcome to today's devotions, these Tuesday morning devotions from Cell Chapel. We are glad that you have joined us this morning. I am joined by Jonathan Knoll, and Pastor Brian Farling will be bringing the message today. We hope that you will enjoy joining us for some familiar Christmas carols this morning. We'll begin with Joy to the World. of Bethlehem. So God imparts to you 
Thank you, Pastor Faith and Jonathan. Good morning again, and thank you for joining us for devotions today. We're going to begin with a passage of Scripture from the Epistle of, to the Romans, from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. We hear these words. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into the grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. You see, at just the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. A certain medieval monk announced that he would be preaching the following Sunday evening on the love of God. As the shadows fell and the light ceased to come in through the cathedral windows, the congregation gathered into the cathedral. In the darkness of the altar, the monk lit a candle and carried it to the crucifix. First of all, he illumined the crown of thorns. Next, the two wounded hands then the marks of the spear wound. In the hush that fell, he blew out the candle and left the chancel. There was nothing else to say. As we continue to pause and anticipate Advent, we do so today with the love that God has for us in and through Christ. Did you ever wonder why God loves us? I think, who are we that we would deserve God's love? God is so gracious, and yet, thank God it isn't anything that we have done because all of our righteous works are like filthy rags to Him. Henry Nouwen inspired the thought that God loves us simply because we are. He comes to us in the incarnation to show us how much He loves us. What is the incarnation? The incarnation is God becoming human in the flesh. It is God's way of bringing his love and light into our world. And what should our response be to the incarnation? Did you ever think of that? How should we respond to God coming in the flesh for us? Do we ever think about such a question? We do so at this time. We might respond with deep thought, anticipation, and awe. We might respond with doubt. We might respond by singing a hymn. We heard, O little town of Bethlehem, and soon we'll hear what child is this. And we love hearing these Christmas carols and hymns during the season of Advent to help us pause. But we cannot stop our thinking at the incarnation alone, can we? We go a little bit further actively pondering to what happens to the flesh of God. It grows. It gets beaten. It gets battered and bruised and eventually crucified. Then triumphantly it gets resurrected and eventually ascends and reigns at the right hand of the Father. Our response ought to be a reciprocal love response. 
And what does a reciprocal love response look like? It looks like this. Because God came in the flesh, we're going to offer our love in return. But I will always remember that God loved me first. That's a verse right out of First John. We love because He first, what? Loved us. Let's think of the depths of God's love from the incarnation to the growth, to the ministry of the cross, to the resurrection, to the ascension, to the reign, and to His eventual return. There isn't anything mentioned in that list that doesn't have to do with us, the body of believers. The church, the body and community of Christ was His mission to love. And we cannot come close to understanding the depths of His love. I want to close with one of my favorite passages from Romans. It's from Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. May we remember and never forget that love stooped down to earth that love is with us now and that love is promised to return. Therefore, may our hearts be full and our minds at peace. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Brian, for your words this morning. As we continue to think about the love of God that comes to us this time of year, let us join our voices in singing our next hymn, What Child Is This?
our final hymn today is O Come, All Ye Faithful. Thank you for joining us today. May the Lord be with you until we meet again.